Thanks so much. Um, hi, uh, I'm Harris Laparoff. I work for the Freedom of the Press Foundation, which is a nonprofit that defends journalists and whistleblowers through technology, advocacy, and digital security. Um, I've been working in-house for F FPF for uh, about three years. I worked for them as a consultant for some three years before that. So I've been around for the entire lifespan of the projects that I'm talking to you about today. Um, so a quick overview of what I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna tell you about the US Press Freedom Tracker, its history and its purpose. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to its API and I'm going to give you a case study on how we used our data to draw insights about press freedom violations during Black Lives Matter protests in 2020. Um, in 2017, in a partnership with a couple dozen other press freedom organizations, we launched the US Press Freedom Tracker. Its purpose is to comprehensively and systematically document aggressions against press freedom in the United States. While stories of journalists being attacked and arrested have of course been covered in the past, there was no central repository of them that we could use to answer questions like, how many journalists were arrested in 2020? Is it more or fewer than were arrested in 2019? Or how many journalists have been subpoenaed this year? And I think in general, we've been quite successful at this goal. Our reporting is commonly cited among other places in news stories and amicus briefs and court cases. Um, one recent example from this year, a journalist, Andrea Sahari of the Des Moines Register went uh, to trial after being arrested while covering a protest. Uh, and at the time that that happened, uh, a lot of reporters turned to us and our data to find out just how common it was for journalists to actually face a criminal trial. Um, and the answer, by the way, is that it's actually quite uncommon. Cases are usually dropped before it reaches trial. Um, I think this was the first one since uh, 2018, I believe. The tracker organizes incidents into 11 categories. Um, some of them are easier to be comprehensive than others. Uh, for example, it's pretty clear what qualifies as a leak prosecution or a journalist being arrested, but we also have categories like chilling statements, which is uh, both a little muddier and a little more expansive where we couldn't possibly be comprehensive, but we still think it's important to cover uh, um, politicians, uh, people in power uh, saying things that have a chilling effect on journalism. Uh, and as you can see, we do also have this catch-all category uh, for incidents that we think deserve coverage, but don't fit neatly anywhere else. Um, so each incident that we cover is thoroughly reported by our staff in a narrative form. Um, but we also think of the tracker as a database. And for every incident we cover, we record a bunch of structured data about it. Uh, we knew early on that we wanted to be rigorous in our reporting and provide people a reliable data set to identify trends and put particular incidents in context. So from the beginning, we've had an API through which people could use the information from our site. Um, as you likely know, an API is a way to access data from a system, in this case, the US Press Freedom Tracker. And our API in particular doubles uh, both as a way to get an export of the complete contents of the website or to execute a query for a more specific subset of data. And it can be easily accessed through a web browser or by any automated script. <clears throat> um, so actually, after four years of operation, we actually just launched a new API pretty recently. Uh, in fact, it was basically yesterday. So uh, if there's any sloppiness in my presentation today, it's because I was waiting to see whether or not we would actually get the new API across the line before uh, delivering it. Um, so we did, and you can find that API at the URL there at the top of the screen. Um, you can even visit that in a web browser. Uh, our website is powered by Django and Django REST framework, which provides a pretty nice interface for just browsing the API as a human uh, using your web browser. Um, if you do visit, you'll notice that that first URL is really just a holding page for listing different endpoints. Uh, 
Currently, we only have one endpoint that supports fetching data about incidents, but we do have plans to add a categories endpoint that will let you fetch data about the different categories as well. Um, so if you want to just download all of the incidents right now, you can use that second URL. It'll give you a complete dump of all the 1,000 plus incidents in our database. Um, and if the default response is JSON, but if you prefer to get it in CSV, you can just add that format CSV parameter to the end. Um, and of course, as a bonus, that'll be a much smaller file size. Um, our API does also support more complex queries, as I mentioned earlier. Um, we do have uh, some documentation for that at pressfreedomtracker.us slash data. Um, but here's a couple examples of queries. I don't want to get too deep into it uh, because I'm not trying to get too technical. But as you can see, you can make a query that uh, has a date range that you want to get incidents within. You can also change which fields you're requesting. Um, so by default, it includes all of the information, which can be quite a lot because it also includes the write-ups uh, in their complete rich text formatting. Um, so if you don't need all that information, you can specify that you just need the title, city, and state um, of the incidents. Um, if you you know want any more examples of queries, uh, feel free to ask me uh, uh, later on in the Slack or during the Q&A. So, as I'm sure everyone remembers, uh, in May of last year, a black man, George Floyd, was murdered on video by Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin, setting off a month of protests across the country. Um, and while these protests were clearly a reckoning on race for the U.S., they were also a flashpoint for press, for press freedom. Um, in 2020, we documented a total of 517 incidents specifically at Black Lives Matter protests. And uh, to put that in a little bit of scale, in a normal year, we document fewer than 160 incidents total. Um, so this was an unprecedented event. Um, our staff worked around the clock to meticulously report and document every incident. Again, each of these is published on our website, and you can browse the website for these individual reports. But we can also put these incidents into context by charting the aggregate data. Um, and here you can see that uh, 2020 was a much larger year for uh, aggressions against press freedom than any of the previous three years. Um, and digging into 2020 specifically, you can see how the uh, press freedom incidents spike in May when the protests began and then slowly taper off but don't return to baseline levels uh, over the, as uh, protests continue over the course of the year. <clears throat> this was a timeline of incidents that I created for our website, uh, and it actually uses our API to provide quite a bit of interactivity. Um, if you uh, visit the site live, uh, and I'll provide a URL a little later on, um, you can hover over each of the those dots to get details about the specific incidents it represents, and you can also use the highlight menu at the top to call out incidents by city or who the aggressor was. Um, and I encourage you to visit the chart and interact with it yourself, but I do want to show off one particular view of it. Um, if you ask the drop down to highlight incidents where the assailant was law enforcement, you can see that the majority of physical attacks on journalists during the protests were perpetrated by law enforcement officers. Um, here's a map of protests across the country that was actually put together uh, using our data by a data journalist at one of our partner organizations, the Committee to Protect Journalists. And here's a chart that I particularly like. Um, we took the top 10 cities by number of incidents and charted them cumulatively over time. Um, and I like that you can sort of see the narrative of uh, how the protests escalated. They sort of started in Minneapolis in late May and then quickly spread to other cities. Um, but I think Portland is particularly interesting to follow on this chart because you can see how a pretty steady stream of aggressions against journalists covering the protests 
um, pretty much immediately followed the deployment of Homeland Security agents to Portland. And finally, uh, this is not specific to uh, the Black Lives Matter protests, but I did put together this heat map of uh, uh, press freedom incidents over the four years of Trump's presidency, starting on the day of his inauguration and ending on the day of Biden's inauguration. Um, and you can definitely see that the Black Lives Matter protests do show up, um, particularly those ones from May of last year, uh, where you have just about a week of, uh, of a lot of press freedom activity and uh, sort of continuing uh, events over the course of the next several months. Um, you can also see some dark spots uh, for Inauguration Day in 2017, as well as uh, um, Election Day in 2020 and uh, January 6th when rioters stormed the uh, Capitol. Um, all the charts that I showed here are available online. Uh, I made them using an observable notebook, uh, except for the one that was uh, made by our partners uh, at CPJ. Um, and if you're a code-oriented person and you haven't uh, investigated observable notebook, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's a very, very cool system. Um, the Press Freedom Tracker is at pressfreedomtracker.us. If you want to use our data, if you're a journalist who has an incident to report, please get in touch with us. We're super responsive, happy to talk. Um, if you come up with anything using our data or even just want some guidance or assistance and sifting through it, um, we would be happy to provide that. We want this information to be widely available, studied and reported, and we're more than happy to talk about specific quirks and how it's recorded or offer advice for analyzing it and just generally see what people do with it. Um, and finally, find, feel free to find me personally on Twitter. My name is Harris Laparoff, so is my Twitter handle. Um, and now I'm happy to answer any questions people have. Thank you so much, Harris. Uh, that was a really great talk. There were a couple of slides in there that I was sort of hustling to screenshot, <laughs> but perhaps I will just ask you to drop your slides in the Z Zenodo repository for CSV. I will absolutely upload them to Zenodo and awesome. I'll probably also post them on Twitter later today. Great, yeah. We don't make people do that ahead of time because <laughs> nobody likes that. <laughs> um, so I have a question uh, while the rest of the crowd might be thinking about some of their questions. I'm really curious to hear, you know, what is when when these things are happening, obviously it's there's never a best case scenario. But from your perspective at the Freedom of the Press Foundation, what it what are what are the types of use that you'd like to be seeing for this data to make sure that it has the maximum impact? What are some examples yeah. of good uses? I think that's a that's a great question. Um, I imagine that our editors might have uh, more of a perspective on that than me, but um, I do think that you know we imagine a lot of the use that we already see uh, it being put to. We we want to be basically the resource that you go to when something is happening with press freedom, and you want to put it into context. Um, uh, so you know, I gave the example of the Andrea Sahari case. Um, earlier uh, also just you know the example of seeing how unprecedented the number of uh, press freedom violations at the protests was um, you know something that we really couldn't have put into context without the uh, without this data yeah as a person who lives in Portland that was a I mean that is an accurate slide it was really wild here um, yeah over the summer but it, uh, sounded like there were some pretty harrowing reports yeah. of uh, you know people being picked up in vans and uh, yeah 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 